Drugs are molecules. Some drugs are entirely synthetic. They don't exist in any sort of natural habitat or environment. Other drugs are made by living organisms. So penicillin is a natural product. Taxol, which is a breast cancer drug, is a natural product produced by a Pacific yew tree. If we're working with synthetic molecules, we can make them very quickly in large quantities. However, there's no guarantee that they're going to make sense of any sort of biological target. Whereas all natural products are by definition biologically active. So when looking for compounds that might be interacting with biological systems in specific fashions, we think nature is a great place to look. around the bridge room today. Stick with the, the consensus. The yeah. Okay. We can carry all that. We're just trying to get this case filled, that's all. Today we're going into the Blue Spring Cave. We're going to be collecting samples from walls and other cave formations and using methodology that is specific to the kinds of organisms that my lab specializes in. So Melissa's master's project is to try and find some predatory bacteria in the cave. And those predatory bacteria have to kill other bacteria. And they make a lot of antimicrobial agents that Brian is interested in. You guys ready? Hazel and I have a collaboration in which Hazel focuses on the fundamental microbiology and geochemistry of caves and I'm interested in discovering new drug candidates. Everybody wants to make sure their lights are working. Okay. The advantage of going into a cave to look for microorganisms is that it's a very unique environment. It's sealed off from the surface, so no energy from photosynthesis can get in. Because of that, the organisms that are thriving and surviving in the cave are having to duke it out for the small amount of nutrients that make it from the surface. This hyper-competition means that organisms must produce offensive and defensive and signaling processes. They need to attack and subdue one another by creating antibiotics. So we think it's a great place to look for antimicrobials and cytotoxic compounds that could be used in cancer and chemotherapy. There is a colony of actinobacteria that you can see sparkling on the opposite wall. So Melissa's just going to go ahead and swap that wall so we can take our culture. When we sample, we're looking for clues that there's microbial activity there. And that can be something really obvious, like actinobacteria colonies, which sparkle like diamonds. And that's because the microorganisms prevent moisture from sticking to the rock. And other times, it can be more subtle. Do you think it's a microbe, or do you think it's I a... think it could be mineral. Well, it's hard to tell. It's, all, it's only on the calcite here. When you see something different that doesn't make sense and you can't explain it in geologic terms, there's usually an indication that there's bacteria there. We chose this location because of the hydrology. It's a wet portion of the cave. There are a lot of actively forming formations, and the kind of organisms that we're looking for enjoy these sorts of habitats. So I'm going to extraordinary lengths to try to make sure that I don't introduce contaminating bacterium into my samples. These can come from my fingers, which is why I wear gloves not to protect me, but to protect the experiment. And I'm repeatedly sterilizing these forceps in order to try to make sure that I'm not contaminating the filters that I'm laying down. If I do contaminate the filter laying down within days, I will see the goo, contaminating goo growing on my plates. And the experiment will be a failure. 
Eventually, after a few weeks in the 13 degrees Celsius fridge, we're gonna come in with another Q-tip on top of this and try to cultivate the organisms that have pushed their way through the membrane. After we retrieve biological materials from caves, we take them back to the lab, and then we start to scry them for microorganisms that might be producing natural products. So there are tens of thousands of molecules and produced by a single microbe. We call the collection of those molecules a metabolome. And our job is really to search that metabolome for the one to 10 molecules which might have drug-like potential. And we do that by isolating the molecule and subjecting it to a large number of analytical techniques. So shown here is the structure of a molecule that we've isolated from a cave environment. And we've defined the relationship of adjacent hydrogens and the connection of hydrogens to individual carbons. And this has given us the framework of this molecule. We can then visualize these molecules in three dimensions then start to imagine what it's going to look like to another biological system by modeling in the surface of the molecule. This particular shape is going to fit a biological receptor of some sort. Ultimately, it's the shape and the chemical properties of a molecule that determine its biological activity. Once we've determined it has an interesting biological activity, such as an antibiotic or an anti-cancer compound, then there is a long process involved with advancing that compound into the clinic, and it can take hundreds of millions of dollars and over a decade in order to get a compound that is an initial hit, a compound that hit kills a microorganism in a, in a Petri dish, to a compound that can be used in humans. Life is unified. We now know that there is not much difference between human beings and starfish, and starfish and bacteria. The fundamental biochemistry, the processes of life, are essentially the same. So one of the philosophies behind looking for natural products as drugs is that natural products are solutions to biochemical problems that nature has been dealing with for millions of years. So we think we have a long way to go before we've fully exhausted the potential of microbes for drug-like molecules.